Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. You know, in the old days, I'm reminded of Christianity when it first began. For the first three or four hundred years, there were all kinds of debates about heresy and truth, true spirit spirituality, true doctrine, and so forth. Still, these debates are ongoing today in some, but on a ramped down level, you know. And I thought those debates that took place long, long centuries ago were really very interesting. A very interesting and very applicable today. So I thought I would have a series of short videos putting forth to you various naughty questions from a philosophical point of view, asking you what you think about them in your own world, in your own understanding of reality, in your own well tang sheng. Is this heresy or is this your sacred doctrine? Is this falsehood? Or is this truth? And here's the very first. On the astral plane, I heard of someone one time who, who loved to, to murder people. And in his youth, you know, maybe that's what happened, I don't know. But that's a very dangerous occupation. And he had developed his, his psi abilities, his astral traveling abilities and so forth. He was able to vicariously satisfy that urge by swooping down in astral form and observing, um, observing murders taking place. And that was kind of his substitute, as he got older, his substitute way of enjoying um, seeing people pass on and, and violently passing on. And. Um, so, so this person thought as he, as he approached his, his very senior years, he began to think, what can I do to make up for this? Because uh, this, is not, this is not a good thing, you know, this is, this is considered bad by society. And he had the notion that he would, he would start meditating and he would form a group where people meditate, right? Well, there's lots of kinds of meditation groups in the world, all kinds of groups. There's a lot of groups say in India, for instance, that meditate for psychic abilities to, to get things for their own personal gain, such as wealth or sex with lots of people or just whatever it is that power in the world, things like that. And so even they even worship, worship Satan sometimes for that very reason. They figure Satan, they don't know much about Satan. They figure he's going to help them out and give them a leg up in the world of power, right? But there was never a mentor more self-centered than Satan. He doesn't have any kinds of uh, feelings of kindness or helpfulness about him. And so they just don't, they, what you need to do if you want a leg up in the world is to look for a mentor with those qualities, kindness and helpfulness. So there are people in meditation groups all over the world who are who are meditating on the wrong stuff you know bad stuff like this gentleman in this astral story he was meditating on murder he loved murder and that's what he meditated on but he thought he would form a group where people could make up for the fact that that he loved murder you know and so here's how the story goes. This is an incredible astral story. It goes like this. Every time his group met to meditate, what would happen is in the middle of the night when everybody was sound asleep, when their unconscious minds and their subconscious minds took the four, he would journey out of body in astral form to a place where a murder was taking place. Then he would come back in body and the next day there would be a meditation that included uh, that samskara of murder. And what resulted was that everyone in his group began to be tempted to murder. This is, this is not an unusual thing. Uh, in general, in the third and fourth dimensions, the spiritual teacher has some seeds or of burnt seeds of, of samskaras in him that will be reflected and ripple out through the group just as the group samskaras ripple into the teacher. So, so my question is this. For this person who really enjoyed the act of murder and who wanted to make up for that 
by having a meditation guru. For those other people who want, who, who want to make up for their desire for physical wealth by forming a meditation group, or who believe they are uplifting their desire for sex with everyone in their group by, by meditating together. I'm asking this question, does the act of meditation uplift that group? Does it pay for the acting out of crimes? What do you think? Is it so or is it not so? Does it make it, for instance, even?